Hey everybody, it's Ryan. I'm standing out here in the pole shed with Hannah. And as you can see, we have the gates set up. Travis and I went through yesterday. We set up the gates so that we can run the cattle through the chute today. We went through and put up the round pen, as you can see over here. The vet brought his chute, so we've got everything set up to run both my steers and heifers through the chute as well as dad's. So we're gonna start with mine. All of my heifers are getting fresh pink tags because I'm keeping them all. I'm switching to a new numbering system, which I'll explain in a second. But uh, then we're gonna do dad's steers and heifers after we run mine through the chute, and then we're gonna finish off running my cows through the chute. They're gonna get preg checked by the vet. And when we run them through the chute, we're giving them new tags. So I'm changing my numbering system from the very confusing two number system, which was cheaper because I could just change the number in the book. And, uh, I could put in any given tag. I didn't have any extra tags laying around. Well, I'm switching over to an easier, basically just one through 100 for the time being, numbering system. So each cow is only gonna get one ID tag, which are these pink tags here. Hannah and I went through the other night and we taped RFID tags onto these tags, which end in the same corresponding number as the ID tag, which is why we went through and taped them all together to make sure that they all correspond to make things a little bit easier. So uh, the ID tags are gonna be going in the cattle's right ear and then the RFID tags are gonna be going into the left ear of the cow. So when we're looking at them, the RFID is going in the right. For my heifers, we, instead of these RFID tags, we're gonna be putting on, let me put this back here so it's, in the right order. Instead of the RFID tags on my heifers, we're gonna be putting on these 701X Bluetooth tags, which if you've seen one of my previous videos, I talked briefly about GPS tags that I've been putting on my bulls. So I've got one or two, two extras that I'm gonna be putting on some of my cows. There's one heifer in particular that I wanna put a GPS tag on because I really like the looks of her and uh, I, wanna, I, I wanna know exactly where she's at at all times. So um, these Bluetooth tags use the cellular in the GPS tags to connect to the cloud and upload the positioning data from these tags and other, other data from them. So these will connect to the GPS tags and then it'll get uploaded to the cloud and it'll tell me in my uh, 701X app where my cows are, where they've been seen at a given time when they're out in the pasture. So that's the RFID tags. And then Hannah has out one of the GPS tags here. These are kind of nifty because they have a solar panel on the back so these last five to seven years, whereas the RFID or the Bluetooth RFID tags, uh, those will last, I think, three years. But I, I can still identify them by the number on the tag themselves. So even when they stop functioning, they'll still function as an identification tag, which is what I'm trying to use the RFID tags for. Since my cows frequently lose their ID tags, which are larger, um, I decided that I needed to switch to a different system to try to keep their IDs the same. So by putting in these RFIDs, I hope that they're less likely to lose them. And uh, that way, they're, it, when I run them through the chute the following year, I'll know which cow lost her tag so I can go through and re-tag her. So I might have to use marker on them, but since we run the cows through the chute every single year, if I write marker on a tag and in a few years it starts to fade, I can go ahead and remark it. So um, those are some of the updates that I'm doing with my cows this year. We are gonna be given the steers and heifers or vaccinations. Um, the bulls are gonna be getting castrated, the ones that still have their nuts. And um, then in a couple weeks, they'll be ready to be taken to market whenever they're ready. And honestly, a couple in here are so large that I would feel comfortable hauling a load to the sales barn whenever they're having a sale. Over on the right here on the app, you can see how many head we've got. I assume this number will stay about the same because I've been using filler. But uh, Hannah's gonna go to the working cow or working animals list, working cattle. I've already got one set up for 2023 spring shoot, so she's gonna edit that. And here's what we're doing that I wanna record. So we've got we're assigning cattle tags, we're assigning 701X devices, and we're pregnancy checking the uh, cows. So she's gonna open that. 
then all she's got to do is type in the number of the cow that we've got and then we'll be changing that particular number so yeah all you got to do is just edit that and go down through the list and hit save these taggers are the same these are both all flex taggers this one is a duflex how there's a difference i don't know i kind of like the duflex because it punches straight through whereas these come in at an angle when they punch through so i kind of like this one a little bit better but awesome. these are a lot more easier to maneuver in around the cattle's ear versus this one it's that one is bigger <laughs> it's chunky yeah skid loaders are just really overpriced cattle panels but they work so good dad's just reinforcing that gate line there to make sure that it doesn't get pushed out we do it every year this group seems fairly docile but i'm sure i'll regret those words Thanks for the patience, Matt. Hey, no problem. Hey, what what all did you vaccinate them with, just for the record, for the camera? Uh, the calves got a bovi okay. and an ultra, a clostridial, okay. an ultra back, and an ultra choice. Each group got a different thing. Just I came to the end of my bottles and they were backed up. Yeah. Uh, the bulls got tetanus, and then the heifers got a bangs. Okay. Brucellosis. And everybody got ivermectin, generic ivermectin. 
we just finished for the day. I'm gonna throw a bale in for the cows and uh, I'll finish this video up probably when I'm sitting in front of the computer so I can explain a little bit more in depth some of the tags that I put in the cows. Now we're in the office and I wanna to talk to you guys about the importance of maintaining records of your animals, which is extremely important for any livestock operation. Up until three years ago, we hadn't been running my cattle through the chute to be preg checked. The reason that's important is because you wanna maintain records on which of your cows are not being bred back. Uh, I had an incident three years ago where my bull was lame and he wasn't breeding my cows and then he recovered. So I have a wide calving window and I'm just starting to get recovered from that. So keeping good records will make sure that you know when cows have calved and that way if you have cows that were bred for fall you don't preg check them and see that they're open and just get rid of them you know i like to give them a second chance especially since i've had an incident and i'm just recovering um, from calves that were being ca uh, born in the fall so i still have a, i think i had three calves that were born as late as september slash october and uh a few of those cows actually came through as open when we preg checked them, but when I looked back on my records, I went, oh, okay, the reason she was open is because she wasn't exposed to the bull long enough to be bred back. So that's one reason why it's very important to make sure that you're maintaining proper records, especially if you're going through and preg checking them on a yearly basis, which if you're an operation like ours, I highly recommend. So the app that I use is 701X, which I am not sponsored by 701X in any way. I just want to get that across. Um, I was looking for GPS tags to keep track of my cattle, specifically my bulls. So I plan to put GPS tags in all my bulls so that I know where they're at in case they get out. I feel like that's extremely important. And this year we went through and put the Bluetooth tags in my heifers. So when the heifers get near to the bulls, the, their tags will connect to the GPS tags and upload that data to the cloud. And that way I'll be able to see where they were at in the field, who they're, which bull they're associated with, and other information such as that. So here on the home screen of 701X, you can see my total herd, which is 67. And I have got a wide variety. So I've got 38 adult cows, I've got two bulls, two adult bulls in here. I've got one bull yearling, which is gonna be featured in our next video, so keep an eye out for that. Um, and I also have four heifer calves listed on here. The reason they're listed as calves is because they were born late last fall. And uh, let's go to the livestock, my herd area, where you can see the my total herd. <laughs> And uh, I have it set up so that I can check to see which ones are were preg checked as open. And if you look over here, you can see P2. She's a heifer, she's a year old. I'm not sure why she has a breeding record in here yet. I think she was the test one because she was the first one that went through. But uh, you can look and see my cows. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven that were we're open. So that's actually pretty good considering I'm still recovering from a wide uh, calving window herd and uh, I look to narrow that down. So the reason you want to make sure that you're keeping track of all this is so that you can look at the animals that aren't being bred on a yearly basis and choose which ones to cull out of the herd if they aren't being productive members of their society and uh, you want to make sure that they aren't free loading and burning up your hay. So by keeping better records, you can see, okay, this heifer, um, she's one year, 11 months. She was just checked as open. Um, I might give her the benefit of the doubt because since she, her, her age might not actually be true, she might actually be younger than is listed. Um, I'm gonna keep her back and give her another chance. So next year I'll go through and see which ones weren't bred this year and weren't bred next year so that I can make better decisions on which animals to take out of my herd. And that way you're ensuring that the herd is being as efficient as possible. So that is the biggest advantage to making sure that you're keeping good records on your animals. And I feel like having this app 
is helping me keep better records because up until I started using it last September, I was just keeping the uh, cow numbers in the app or notes app on my phone and they weren't consistent from year to year because whenever I would get a cow that came through, um, I would just put new tags in her and note the change. And um, now that I have RFIDs, I'm hoping that they'll stay more consistent year to year. Um, another cool thing about this app, for those of you who are looking into getting um, GPS tags, is that you can actually go to the map and see where your animals are. So right now I only have two GPS tags in, so the Bluetooth tags aren't being synced with the cloud until I get a cow with a GPS tag out there, or a bull with a GPS tag out there. So as you can see, this is about the accuracy of the tags. Um, I, you can see that the bull was not in the barn. It's not 100% accurate, but it gets you within the ballpark range to where you can throw a stick if you're out in the pasture and find the animal that you're looking for, um, which is I think is really cool. I was watching one of my animals in the pasture, and it was neat to see how she was moving throughout the pasture throughout the year. So highly recommend if you're planning on putting them in any or just looking for a few, I would recommend putting the GPS tags in your bulls so then that way when your bulls are nearby your heifers or your cows, they'll, it'll sync up to the cloud. But uh, if we go back to the My Herd tab and we click on a bull, you can actually see, if we go to reports, their activity, which I think is pretty cool. We're a little bit slow today. There we go. So you can see when the animals are most active. And uh, I, one thing I found interesting with my cow that I had tagged out in the pasture was that they were most active right away in the morning. Whereas the bulls are more active in the afternoons or as late, as, well, here he's pretty active at 9.30 in the morning. 8.07 p.m., 6.02 p.m., right there about three o'clock in the afternoon and you can see in the middle of the night is when they're least active so it's a good way to keep better track of your herd and uh, this is just the app that I use there are other free options out there and uh, if you don't use software like this I highly recommend it because I do feel like it's helping our operation so those are some things that you can write down to uh, help your own herd and I hope you learned something if you watch to this point in the video um, I tried to go through this as fast as I can. I've gone through this about six or seven times trying to slim it down to fit it into this video. We've talked about running running cattle through the chute and showing what we've done to them in the past, but I've never really talked about managing my herd because I feel like I hadn't been doing a, that of a bang up job on it until now. And uh, I'm still getting better. So with that, thank you for watching this video, guys. Be sure to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Snapchat, all how farms work. And be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, don't forget to, if you do end up buying any GPS tags, be sure to mention my name. <laughs> so with that, I'll see you next time, guys.